What's up? This is Corey with FullMetalRock.com, and I'm sitting here with Mr. Kyle Turley. How's it going, man? Right on. I'm good. How you doing, brother? Doing great. Appreciate yeah. you coming on board. So, good to uh, be with you. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, tell me about the current tour and what the fan reaction has been like so far. Well, we're on our West Coast tour right now. Um, you know, you have to prep pretty heavy for a West Coast tour, being back, uh, you know, in the south, pretty much east of the Mississippi. Um, so coming from Nashville, we just you know, planned out this whole thing, and we've been out for going on three weeks, three and a half weeks. Uh, we're going to take a little break, get the fly back home for about a week, and then we come back and finish the uh, second leg of the tour uh, and head back to uh, Nashville. So things are going great, though, man. The response has been great. All the venues want us back. and. You know, this is our first run by ourselves out west, like a true run. Uh, we've done some shows in um, Southern California, but not a full-blown West Coast tour. Your, uh, your latest album, Death, Drugs, and the Double Cross, it is your second album. Uh, How did you approach the creative process for that versus Anchor Management? Um, pretty much just just let it go. I mean, that's what I'm just doing with my whole thing with music, is just letting it take its course. So, you know, the second record was the follow-up, and it's what I got to say at the time. I mean, you know, that's really what it is. Um, uh, you know, the sound has evolved, the lyrics have evolved, my writing skills have evolved, and uh, from the first record to the second record is just a night and day uh, progression, I think, that people will be able to see. And, Understand that I'm taking this thing very serious. Uh, both the albums were released on Gridiron Records, which is a label that you started with Mikey Dolan, I believe, right? Uh, Mikey was originally involved, uh, Tim Pickett, um, uh, uh, Nick Adler, Moses uh, Roxy, uh, originally involved. So, uh, a few, few people were involved with that originally. Now it's just me and Tim Pickett. Um, how's everything going with that one? What's the current status? What's the word in there? Oh, uh, sound guy's not here. He'll be here at 8.30. Jesus. All right, this is John. I'm sorry. Yeah. We had outside. <laughs> right? Sorry. Go ahead with that oh, question. No, no, no. Um, no, I was just saying, uh, how did everything come about with, you know, getting together with uh, Ground Records? What made you want to start it? And, uh, uh, well, music's always been a big part of my life. And, uh, you know, I was living in L.A. at the time. Um, I was rehabilitating an injury I had from football, trying to get back on the field, and just being there, being around some of my friends that were in the industry, um, you know, Mikey being one of them, you know, we had a lot of time to hang out over at uh, his studio where he was recording some new bands, and um, you know I'd always had a great interest in uh, you know the business side of music, so you know being that I had the ability financially to, to you know, make an investment and. and make a run at it, uh, you know, I jumped in and do it. Uh, and we made our run and we lost big time and made a bunch of mistakes, but uh, it paved the way for, you know, what I'm doing right now. Uh, you know, in that um, I've already pretty much made every mistake you can make. So um, doing pretty good with this project. Now with, with Gridon, is it something that you or focus more on like just for for your own for your own music or maybe signing other bands in the future. Oh, well, definitely. Uh, I mean, the goal was to create a record label, and uh, you know because I love the business side of it. Uh, I think I've got a good ear for music, and um, there's a lot of great bands out there. Um, you know, that don't get opportunities uh, that I would like to give opportunities to. You know, uh, there's uh, tons and tons of great bands that are. Sitting on the shelf that uh, other labels don't know what to do with, and you know I'd like to be able to have that ability to, you know, take them and show them what to do, and I'm, you know, using the model that uh, I've been shown by guys like Hank Three and uh, you know all the other guys in Down that I know and you know, Crowbar Arts, you see, and all those guys that are my buddies that tour all the time. You know, I I keep close to all of what they're doing, um, so uh, you know I want to be able to hopefully one day create a killer record label, you know, and have some good band signed to it. Definitely think of a band or two you might want to check Definitely. Out. White Light's a great <laughs> band. Definitely. Then we play some shows with them. I mean, like I said, that's what I'm talking about. 
bands like White Light, um, you know, there's a band in Birmingham called Catalyst. It's just been an amazing band for so long and hasn't got a break. Um, you know, but uh, there's a ton of others. You know, Cody Cook in Louisiana is doing great things and he's young. So you've got young acts, you know, middle of the road and older acts that I think you know, a lot of people would want to hear. It's just a matter of getting some backing behind them and a, bit, a little bit of a model um, you know, to go out and do it with. Now, the energy that you've been known for on the football field definitely carries over to your music. When you're not busy on tour recording, how do you tend to uh, spend your extra time? <laughs> uh, sleeping and uh, uh, sleeping <laughs> and eating, uh, pretty much, because you know we're we're we're, we're, we're busy. I mean, when we're on the road and it's show and show and show. Uh, those days off are precious, and you, you know to get caught up on rest. I mean, I drive the bus and. Um, you know, guys are doing load in, and you know we're all picking up slack wherever slack needs to be picked up. Every one of us has uh, an obligation to this band that exceeds our own personal, um, you know, little space. And uh, you know, I guess that's the sports world coming out in what I grew up with with that, and you know, incorporating it into this. Team type of environment. Very. I mean, definitely, you got to have it. I mean, this is something. It's a business. You know, in anything. Whether it's sports or just business, a band, uh, whatever it is, if you don't have continuity and structure that everybody abides by and you know is there and committed to, you're not going to succeed. Something's going to fall. Yeah, exactly. Somewhere along the line, it's going to bust the wheel off and derail you. How's his driving? Yeah, <laughs> he's unreal. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good thing or a bad thing? No, no, that's a great thing. <laughs> yeah, if something crapped out. He could be a professional. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah, I, I thought about that. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. I, I, got, I got a job to fall back on. He could be a pretty good bus driver. He's good. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. I feel very safe. I got uh, security after. <laughs> they make good money. Uh, shoot, but it's his bus. bus driver. Well, yeah, so who's going to look after it more than him? <laughs> and he's did it so long, so who's going to be better at it than him? Yeah. <laughs> Now, I know in the past though, you played drums uh, yeah. for a metal band, I believe. Uh huh. Yeah. Is that something that maybe in the future you'd be interested in putting out a metal album? Or? Oh, yeah, man. I got little side projects I'm messing around with. Me and my bass player, Big Rob, we're, we're always messing around with new things. And, uh, you know, I, we got a little side project uh, where I'm on drums and he's on guitar. Uh, killer, sludgy, you know, sleep type of. Uh, very doom kind of. Yeah, doomed out big time. You guys got a name yet you want to put out there? Yeah, Death Monster. Yeah. Death Monster. Yeah, you'll be seeing it soon. We've got, a, we've got a pretty good idea what we want to do with it. Very cool. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> if you guys ever come along to the West Coast for a show, um, got a band or two, you definitely have to go Killer, man. Killer. Uh, we come out here. We'll be out here every year around this same time, you know, because we have to plan the West Coast tour way in advance. And this will be around the same time every year we'll be out here. I'll definitely um, give me a holler to Patrick or whatever. I'll definitely see about promoting you guys and yeah, get some big sure, yards. Yeah, for sure, man. Appreciate it. Uh, I know it's kind of getting close to showtime, waiting for the sound guy and everything, but uh, anything else that maybe you know you don't get asked in an interview pretty often that you want to touch base on? Not really, man. I mean, I'm, I'm a question and answer giving guy, not a, you know, <laughs> coming up with them. I don't, I don't do well. <laughs> you know, they, they, Give me a question, I'll give you an answer. All right. Well, after yeah. this tour, what's what's next? Back to the studio or? Uh, no, we just finished a new record. Um, yeah, so you know, we haven't not come out. Um, I don't know when we're going to release it exactly. If it's the end of this year, or we may save it and uh, do the CD release um, at the Super Bowl in New Orleans this year. So you know, blow it out real big there, which you know could be. The best option. <laughs> King out. Yeah, you know, but what better place would it uh, be served than to launch out of New Orleans? Uh, the yes. Super Bowl will be in there, and hopefully uh, the boys will be in the game. I, you know? Exactly. <laughs> that would be uh, unreal. Maybe we'll be asked to play halftime. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Get the man on halftime. That's right. We'll play My Soul Bleeds Black and Gold, man. Yeah, Rock that dome like it needs to be. Well, Kind of short and sweet because I know you guys are pressed for time, but thank you very much.
Cool, man. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you.